Hi friends and my fellow viewers, welcome to yet another episode of Coffee Conversation in the series of Sri Shakti powered by the Emerging India Forum, TIFF, Lions Club of Mumbai Shining, India Business Group, IBG, Indian Chambers of International Business, ICIB and Prime Infotech Solution. Today, the theme of our conversation is the anatomy of a great emotional clarity coach. Today, Mr. Mansoor Thakral and I, Jolly Singh, will be hosting and co-hosting our conversation respectively. For our today's coffee conversation, we have today with us Nidhi Sani. Nidhi Sani is an emotional clarity coach, communication skills trainer, author, and public speaker, having over 22 years of experience as a successful team member, leader in an educational institutions as well as corporates. So as per our former format, we first cover professional journey, then the personal journey, and then we end up all of our conversation with a fun rapid fire round. So now let's get started with our today's conversation. Over to you, Mansoor. Thank you, Jolly, for that. Uh, Nidhi, we welcome you today to the Coffee Conversations. Thank you. <laughs> Okay. All right. So let me, uh, let me kick off the conversation today uh, by asking you, so how did it all start for you? How was like the professional journey and how was it like in the initial days? Um, interesting question because uh, my professional journey has been really unplanned. Um, so 22 years ago, I did not, I was not doing what I am doing today. I studied to be in the textile industry. So for 15 years, I worked in the textile and the fashion industry. And uh, in 2014 is when I shifted gears. Uh, it was just a very chance decision because I was pretty unhappy wherever I was and whatever I was doing, even though I was doing well, but I was unhappy internally. And uh, that made me shift gears and uh, a very casual shift because I did not know what I needed to do. Uh, I just wanted to be out of wherever I was, right? And um, yeah, so it all started. My father said, Nidhi, teaching kar lo. Jab kuch pata hi nahi hai, to teaching kar lo, koi baat nahi. I was like, okay. Uh, all my life, I had resisted this. I was like, I can't be, I'm not a good teacher. I can't be, I, I'm not fond of kids. I'm not fond of uh, teaching. So I'd always resisted that day, I did not. And uh, possibly I strongly feel Something up there was telling me not to. And uh, I surprised myself. Uh, I, can't, I can't even imagine to think, um, think imagine that what, what kind of a teacher. I was, I was amazing. I know that. Okay. Apne uh, me too. But yeah, I was. I know I was good. And I was a little <laughs> offbeat teacher. <laughs> you know, I was not the traditional type. And that's what I enjoyed. And I got the best place, uh, the best school that I started with this career. And uh, I, for me, that is my teaching ground. That's my alma mater for this second profession. So uh, I don't take it as a working place where I started my career, uh, the second league of my career. Uh, I take it as, it was like an institution for me where I was learning. Like we go to college, we go to school. Jate. So for me, it was that point. And uh, that made me realize that I love this. I, I love uh, this industry, education industry. I wanted to be here, but uh, definitely not as a teacher. Not bound in the four walls of an institution. And in 2018, I shifted gears again. And in the same industry, I diversified into coach, into trainings. And uh, I went independent and I started with small programs and uh, went in to do a couple of certifications. So, um, which made me an, a certified trainer, started with ESL, diversified into uh, corporate trainings, uh, into communication trainings. And uh, in 2020, coaching happened. So, coaching is the latest vertical that was added to my. Uh, you know, profession, my work. And in 2020, that happened. And it's been a wonderful journey because um, it's all about, my work is all about people. So coaching 
amalgamated everything that i was doing in training it made my training more impactful because i was able to understand people better i was able to uh, not lecture them i was able to facilitate them i was able to get answers out of them so everything worked everything fit really well you know so that is how my journey has been and uh, today i yeah that's what i do i'm a corporate facilitator that i would that something i would love to call myself as and a life coach an emotional clarity coach so yeah that's my little journey just to add on to that question if i have a question i want to ask you you said you are an you are an offbeat teacher so can you please explain what was the offbeat teaching that you used to do was totally different it wasn't just a traditional way of understanding and teaching and uh, teaching them i wouldn't just go there lecture i would connect to them on a different level and uh, more than them i would enjoy my time there wo kare ya na kare maza lekin main bahut maza karti thi and a uh, lot of games lot of interactive uh, stuff happening and i also got a chance in those three years to be a part of uh, the ib curriculum the pyp also cbsc as well as pyp so it was a different uh, exposure also that i got you know how beautiful it is not just going into the lecturing mode but understanding so the, you you can very well imagine this was in 2014 and uh, those children were in grade 4 at that point in time i started with primary school they still in touch with me unko chode hue pata nahi kitna waqt ho gaya but they still in touch with me and they still come back to me ki ma'am aapke sath bada maza aaya matlab we want to be a teacher uh like you nothing better than that that if a fourth grade fourth grader who was at that point in time in fourth grade today they might be in 10th and 11th and they come back to me saying that we want to be a teacher because of you and like you so kuch to sahi kiya hoga yeah absolutely bahut kuch sahi kiya aapne kuch nahi yeah so that just feels nice ki you're on the right track back in life yeah Yeah, so moving on to the next question uh, like we know that you know like as you are a coach and things so could you please tell us something about like what is something with human skill training you know a human skill trainer we have emphasized this word like i've come across this word like multiple times okay like like sab bolte skill developing tik cheez hoti hai ye hota hai no? what is your clarity or how, how would you like to explain it to our viewers like what is the term human skill trainer i am going to credit this word uh, this term to my uh, you know what i call myself as um, to simon sinek actually i okay. would always cite myself as a corporate trainer or communication skills trainer and uh, i was just listening to one of his talks where i understood that whatever work i'm doing i'm working on a human internally or externally be it skill building or be it an internal building or the internal talk as a coach that we work on and all of this is for survival right and we need these skills to survive it's not something that i'm going to a college to study engineering no i'm talking about soft skills which we all need these are survival skills if we have to live in this world we need it if we have to live with ourselves we need how to you know sort out our mind and that's something that really connected with me i said yeah i am not uh, just here transferring any soft skills or any communication skills i'm transferring a lot more than that i'm making a human equipped i am a human skills trainer so that's how i have added you know i love to call myself a human skills trainer because that's i think that's exactly what i'm doing right so um, yeah along with all the technicalities what i'm doing i am a human skills trainer <laughs> so uh, before you go and like start a training or you know like a corporate training with every client how does the preparation take place of of that session could you like walk us through that sure uh, so the first thing that um, i understand about whenever i have to prepare for any session is understand who my client is first of all who's that audience who's my client what 
is their requirement why is this a requirement okay why is it that they just came up with this particular requirement why do they need this training happening and why do they want sessions? What are the pain areas? So that's my first question ever. That yes, I can do that, but I want to know what have you observed about your team that you want me to help them with? So I ask 101 questions. I think sometimes uh, my uh, clients might person I'm interacting with that first point of contact might also get irritated with me but I need all those questions because I believe in uh, I believe in customizing my sessions I believe in tailor-made sessions so it's not that no I'm going to I'm going to customize it according to what you want right so I ask a lot of questions and uh, another thing that I'm very, very particular about is uh, making it interactive and workshop model. So my trainings are mostly like a workshop model. Even if it's a, it's a one hour session, I try to keep it interactive and workshop model, not just lecturing. I, I am not there to just, you know, uh, take the limelight on the stage. So I try to use activities as much as possible, gamification. That's what I do with my sessions. But yes, it all starts from understanding what do they want. And uh, once I understand that, I also, uh, I design it. And then I, before finalizing everything, I try to ask my client, what is it going to be like? Uh, is it virtual? Then I know what I have. I have the screen. Right? And how much access would I have? If it's a physical session, I'd like to understand the space where I'm going to be presenting it so that I know what do I have in hand then? How do I need to, uh, you know, be mindful of that space? What kind of uh, activities can I do? What kind of engagements can I do with, the, with these people? So I do a lot of uh, this back end work before going into my final trainings. So, you know, when people say, I'm sure every trainer, I would agree with this. Uh, even if you're delivering a two-hour session, there's two days of work that goes into it. So, and people only see the two hours, but there's a lot more that goes into it. And I completely agree. Like a few days ago, we had someone in the coffee conversation who, who termed this, um, she termed it as, she's like, when we go to do trainings or we go to anything, we have an axe in our hand. It takes us two to three hours to sharpen the axe and then go into to go and teach anything or to cut down trees. I said I yeah. understand. That. True, true. You have to do so much of work before you just enter that room. All right. I think this next question would like. I mean, I don't know how to ask it to you, but I will definitely go ahead. Okay. So, how would you evaluate your performance as a facilitator trainer? And the part to that question is, how do you keep improving yourself? How do I evaluate? Uh, yeah. <laughs> the first evaluation comes uh, by the reaction of your audience. Okay. The participants, how are they taking it? If they are totally engaged, feels nice. Okay, that's that is definitely a thumbs up. If they are engaged and there's a lot, there are a lot of questions coming up from their end, and they are speaking more than me. Okay, then it's a it's going fine. Second way, uh, how I evaluate is also through feedback. Okay. So I do not wait till the end for a feedback. If I have a long full day session, I ensure that my feedback is happening every few hours, right? After each module is you know, finished. So do we do take questions. I do take questions towards the end, but I also believe in asking, you know, if anything, if they want to just clarify anything. So my feedback tells me how that session is going, that evaluation for sure, right? If you are able to gauge how your client, how your clients are, your participants are, I think you know where it's heading and you can obviously make amendments also. Uh, what was the second question? How do I improve? Yeah, how do you improve yourself? Yeah, uh, after like each performance, I mean, after each, uh, you know, after each training and everything, you, you, you explain how you evaluate this. But how do you continue to keep improving yourself? One is feedback. Okay? okay. The first thing is feedback. What is it? So when you do feedback, I also ask them, uh, sometimes I also ask them, what is it that 
you know, possibly can make it better. Any feedback from their end. So that helps me understand what I can do better the next time. Of course, self-evaluation, where I feel dissatisfied, I wish I could have done this better. I wish I could have done this in a different way. So that introspection helps me. Um, talking with other, uh, my peers helps me. Discussing with them helps me. If I have an observer, then uh, after the session's done, I also believe in talking with the person who I had connected with, connected with, who had, you know, I was interacting for the training. So that's another feedback uh, that I take and I learn. I'm a call, I'm, I'm, I know it's a very cliche term, lifelong learner. As of now, it's overused. Uh, Everybody is a lifelong learner, but no, I am because I invest a lot in my own upskilling so that I can get to the table the best that possibly I can, I can do, right? Something that's keeping me updated with the times. And uh, yeah, another thing, it's pretty funny. I'm sure, but I'm sure those creative ones can uh, definitely understand that. Um, if I'm doing, suppose I'm doing an activity, Okay, I have five different, six different or 10 different audiences. I've done this activity with this and that and I've done it with 10 different people. The 11th time I'm like, I'm getting bored of this. I need to do something. Else. So it's those for those people, it might be the same. It's a new one. But for me, I get bored of it. So this is another uh, sign for me when I have started getting uh, bored. I've started, I have started getting, um, you know, stagnant with a particular activity then that's also my sign that, okay, now, you know, let's give a twist to it. Let's do something new with it so that there's some new energy that comes in. So that's another way how I also <laughs> grade myself. And I can completely relate with that because as we like, we do coffee conversations, we, you know, we sometimes have the same format and then for us, it's like every time to bring up something new. So I can completely relate with what you just told me. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. Uh, so could you like uh, give us any kind of uh, experience or, you know, like spill the beans or something with some kind of experiences that you have had any in your profession, any good experiences, if you put it in? All are good. I, I enjoy everything. I, I, I literally enjoy. Uh, so all are good. But um, something that stands okay. out, like, you know, which you can yet okay. remember. To yet. So I remember I was doing this training in a college and uh, <clears throat> those um, it was campus to corporate professional skill right and uh, so the student came up to me and uh, she said you know ma'am thank you this is the first time I felt that this particular topic I'm doing something about it before you there were a lot of people who have come up and who've spoken about this but the way you did this training and the way you did it I'm first time feeling that I can do this so it was, I, I felt really good about it that um, I was able, this might be some kind of an impact that this person, that this child, the student, you know, I was able to impact her in some way. So which felt nice that yes, uh, it was good, felt nice. <laughs> you know, these kind of little feedbacks, they are feedbacks for you, right? That you're moving on the right track, possibly you're doing the right thing. And uh, yes, it's um, helping others. So and uh, yeah, another one I remember, it was, a, uh, I work a lot with IT firms. Uh, you know? So a lot of uh, work happens with tech, tech people. And I still remember there was one presentation skills training that we were doing. And it was a two full day program, two full days. And uh, these people have been doing really, really well for themselves. And it's a very big uh, organization I'm talking about. And um, they had some massive breakthroughs after those two days. So these, uh, we all know how ID people, they, they, know, they know everything about their work, back end, everything, right? But when it comes to coming forth, you know, so because there was a transition that was supposed to happen, now they were supposed to move to the leadership position, right? And uh, now when this transition was happening and they were undergoing this training, so they realize that it's not just about the technical skills and so much small little nitty gritty, small little nuances they were not able to focus on. So those two days were massive. And even after the training happened, I received a lot of messages on uh, LinkedIn 
that uh, how that training has helped them and what they have achieved beyond it. So, you know, these are small little incidents and small little uh, circumstances where the feedbacks, which makes you feel good that, yes, something's happening. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. So you're the author of uh, Fix It Like a Pro, New Life Quotes for a New You. So the first question, like what inspired you to write this book? So that book actually, I would say that's my first book and it was a co-authored one with okay. a couple of uh, my fellow coaches, friends. And uh, the idea of writing that book was uh, um I'll tell you, I'll be very honest and I'm sure very many people can again relate to this, especially the new authors who are trying to write because um, we all wanted to write a book, okay? And writing an individual book solo was seeming like a humongous task for most of us. And uh, we all had started, but you're not able to progress further. You know, it's like, you know, you want to climb a mountain and you're looking at the summit, but you're not focusing, but you're only able to see itna lamba rasta jana hai. So there's something new. So then we decided, let's get together and uh, let's share our stories that we all have come out, come from a place of mess. And how did we sort it out? How did we fix it? So that particular book came from that thought process. And um, uh, so each, if you read the chapters, it's uh, each one of us has shared our stories and how we have turned around our life. And uh, so each chapter contributes to wherever, and we have not, we've tried not to overlap. So if one person's talking about uh, one area of life, the others are talking about different other areas of life or different aspects of fixing it. Fixing your mess like a pro, fixing it like a pro, right? So, um, and it's been a beautiful, I think the, the whole thought of writing that book came from there. And that is how, uh, and we learned so much about team teamwork while writing that uh, book because uh, so many authors coming together, getting it all, um, you know, in one place, publishing it. I think that was a wonderful experience. Yeah. Uh, so, so could you give us some tips on, like, you know, for the upcoming writers who are going to like publish books and, and stuff? What would be your advice to them? I, again, many people may have different takes, but I believe that uh, what you want to, what you feel, write that. Because see, what I am, uh, what I did, but this is a self-help book. It's a non-fiction. Okay, it's not a fictional book. It's a non-fiction one. It's a self-help book. If anybody wants to write, uh, so if you want to share who you are, we all have stories. So share who you are. Share from the heart. Don't make it all up. Right? Don't write to impress. Write to express. That's how. That's what I feel. Right? So if you do that, it's going to come out from the heart and possibly it might just connect. So how did you come up with the ideas for your stories? And I know we want to know like how is like the creative processing going on? See, because as you're a coach and everything, so you maybe get in those writer's blocks sometimes in life and you know, like so how do you cope up with all that? So like when I said now, we, we learned a lot about teamwork. Uh, so we were seven of us who were writing this and okay. uh, there were three of them who were ready to back off nothing is happening right so there were people who were ready to back off so one thing i learned we we ensured that we are not letting anybody back off okay okay so that was the first thing we ensured that nahi jayega koi we all are there tumhe jo help chahiye tum batao hum hai you know, so that is how first things first, right? Because we were having uh, a writer's block. We would sit and then we would be like, oh my God, now what? Yeah, like you said, writer's block. Ab kya likhe? So something that uh, worked was first was work that take a break. It's okay. Nahi ho hai na, aaj, tu mat likho. Every day we promised ourselves to write a couple of thousands of words that hum itna likhenge ya do page likhenge ya char page likhenge. Uh, don't bash yourself for that. Okay, so that is something that we worked on. Secondly, we worked on that 
get up from the place where you've always been sitting and writing. If you feel you want to change the place, you want to go out in nature, you want to write early in the morning, you want to write early, uh, you know, late at night, you want to lie down and write, write any which way, but you don't have to just sit, suppose if I'm sitting in my office right now, I don't have to just sit here and da -da 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 -da, nine to 10 is my lighting time to I'm going to just sit on my computer because creativity doesn't come out like that. Right. So these were two things we definitely followed. Because we are also new writers, right? We are not, we are not seasoned writers. But writers block ke baare mein, this is one thing we understood that uh, give yourself a break, don't bash yourself up. Agar aaj nahi hua, it's perfectly fine. But the moment it comes, you feel there's a thought coming. Just, just write it down. We all have our phones in front of us, right? Usi point pe, usi point pe, jo bhi aa hai, mind mein likh liye. That, that's, that's the creativity part. And how we decided about the stories, like I said. Uh, we, we were very sure that we don't want to overlap. We don't want that if a reader picks up a book, uh, he's reading similar stories. So we wanted a different version of it. So we would meet uh, because we were co-authoring. So obviously uh, that, that was needed. We, we met. We um, spoke about who is going to write about what. So we brainstormed first. What is our pain area? What have we come out of? What is it that we would want to share with the world? And that's, that was the first thing that we did. And so that there's no overlap and we have a different message for the, uh, we have seven stories and seven different messages in our book. So yeah, simple. Uh, I hope I managed to answer. <laughs> yes, yes, you have. So you all are seven authors. So all together, we all came in collaboration and uh, like, you know, done this book. So how much time did it take you all overall to like get this book completed and on its way? So good one. I think two months, one and a half months. Two months, one and a half or two months. Yeah. Something okay. like that. Yeah, so we were, uh, yeah, I think we did it in that. So initially we started, we took it very easy. Ek hi to chapter likhna hai, koi baat nahi kar lenge. And then after two, three weeks, we realized that nobody is moving. One has written uh, five pages, the others are just sitting. Mere se nahi ho raha, you know? So there was a lot of uh, overwhelm and procrastination, fear. Look kya kahenge. I also started setting in for some of them. So we, we were pushing each other that no, we were keeping each other accountable and uh, asking so i think yeah it took us uh, two weeks uh, two months sorry uh, one and a half two months and once we got hold of the initial uh, two three weeks where we did nothing then we kept pushing then uh, one person took uh, ownership of so um, so we told everybody that please sapna editing karna tum log. proofreading editing okay so do that so the basic proofreading we all did for ourselves. Then uh, one person ensured that uh, one person is editing the whole look of the book, how it would look like. We'd, we self-published it. Okay. Uh, so we did not take any professional help for it. We self-published the book. Uh, so that's the reason one, uh, two people uh, designed the cover of the book. And uh, then we would brainstorm, like, what do you like? What colors? How is it going? So that's what we would do. and. Um, Others, somebody did uh, uh, registration on Notion Press. Pe humne kiya tha. So, you know, uh, how and what to do and align it accordingly and do all the formalities. So, you know, that's how that's how all of this happened. So within two, two months, we were able to launch it, which is a big thing. Uh, people liked it, uh, though we did not promote it massively, but yes. Um, Whoever read it has given us good reviews. So if our viewers want to read it, and if I want to read it, where is your book available? Amazon. Amazon. Pe Amazon, hai. Amazon pe hai, Notion Press. Pe hai. It's all there. All right. No, <laughs> no, definitely a book to read. Like the way you've explained everything, I can, you know, there's a saying, a blood, sweat, tears. I can actually see that while you're explaining it to us. You took out so much time and everything. <laughs> well, it was fun it was an experience and the best thing is after that uh, when we had done there's so many um, other people who connected with us uh, who were in the network in our community connected you know guide so at that point in time when people are starting out uh, 
फाइनेंशियल क्रंच लगता है सबको कितना करना पड़ेगा कैसे सो वी गाइडेड देम कि तुम सेल्फ पब्लिश कर लो कोई बात नहीं यू कैन डू दिस वे यू कैन गो दिस वे सो या इट वाज नाइस टू हेल्प अदर्स विद आवर ओन एक्सपीरियंसेस आल्सो अलेक्स सो लेट्स हॉप बैक इनटू द इमोशनल क्लैरिटी पार्ट नाउ ओके सो व्हाट डू यू थिंक इज द बिगेस्ट ऑब्स्टिकल दैट पीपल आर फेसिंग राइट नाउ व्हेन दे आर ट्राइंग टू अचीव लाइक एन इमोशनल क्लैरिटी we don't address our emotions okay we are very uh, superficial about addressing or accepting our emotions mai theek hu mai bilkul theek hu so you know we 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 don't even know what we are feeling i'm feeling sad i'm feeling bad i'm feeling happy i'm feeling excited that's all wo char panch das naam hai hume pata hum usi mein categorize karte hain and uh, we do not understand what goes beyond it hamare triggers kya hain negative or positive emotions but what are our triggers what is it that gives us happiness we never go into the depth of it and uh, when we talk about fears agar hum fear ki baat kare uh, hum log kehte hain hum overwhelm ho raha hai kis cheez ka ho raha hai koi to dar hoga kahin na kahin wo dar kahan se aa raha hai wo dar koi zaruri nahi hai abhi se aa raha hai it's going long back in history mm-hmm. and ke bachpan se aa sakta hai maybe there's some yeah, like yeah so it's very very deep to understand what is it that's you know causing so much of emotional turmoil kyun aap aisa feel kar rahe ho it's all about that self awareness uh, so yeah it's very very deep i think uh, the basic challenge is we have no idea about our emotions but uh, like like when when normally like as you know when we grow as kids so like we have a lot of childhood trauma the baggage what we grow over long and as we become an adult and when i like this is the personal experience like i've had like these few sessions with a few people and we never we go to them and we tell them you know you're sad because you had something that you have done in your childhood and that you're holding it back many of the people do not try to agree to that they like are bachpan ki baat hai bhul gaya and abhi main yahan pe hu and stress and this and that you must have faced such people in your life right yeah i yeah. still do half <laughs> the world is living like that there are only very very few people who are ready to even understand and accept and work on their emotions and see the doctor who asam kab jaate hain jab bilkul aa jaate hain apni self medication khatam ho jati hai nahi to hum to pharmacist ke paas jaye bhaiya aap hi de do na goli de do you know aap bata do pet kharab hai aap hi de do उसको पता नहीं है क्या है क्या प्रॉब्लम है लेकिन हम उसे गोली ले लेंगे फिर घर में दादी माँ के नुस्खे चलेंगे अपना कौन पैरासिटामोल चल जाएगा व्हाट एवर वी डू वी डू एवरीथिंग एंड देन जब चीज हाथ से निकल जाती है दैट्स व्हेन वी गो टू द डॉक्टर राइट सो हाफ ऑफ द वर्ल्ड इज स्टिल लिविंग इन दिस की नहीं नहीं सब ठीक है दुनिया ऐसे ही चलती है बुरा लग भी गया तो क्या हो गया इट्स ओके इट्स परफेक्टली फाइन सो वी डोंट टॉक अबाउट we can still go to the doctor for a stomach ache or heart toot gaya whatever but we don't go for you know what's happening inside our head um do it's nice that things are opening up and people are becoming more open about addressing such things but uh, yeah <laughs> we still we still have no idea <laughs> so sometimes people blame it on the situations and then they say like situations aisa ho gaya mere sath isliye i have been changed into becoming like this so when you, and such people have ever come in front of you or something how have you addressed them to tell them this is not exactly how it is so one thing is very very um, important as a coach is that you don't tell the person straight on the face until they are ready okay uh, you have to be very um, but that's my way of working at least i would say i have seen all the different types of coaches my way of working is to understand the person first let them let them speak their heart out bol lo you know koi sunne wala nahi hai na to ab bolo aapko jo batana hai bolo usme se i keep questioning them i keep asking them and then just i don't tell them ki tumne aisa kiya i just show them a little different perspective what if right so when you show them when you ask a couple of questions show them a different perspective sometimes they automatically realize that it was them it was not the other person right it was not the situation they were becoming a victim of situation so we have to make them understand that they are not a victim of situation sab cheez ka problem outward nahi hai sab cheez ka problem inward hi hota hai right right but uh, now that's a journey like and you have to be very calm and you have to be very very compassionate and patient with them uh and 
again it's all tailor made somebody is ready quickly and they want uh, to be heard they want to listen and uh, directly on their face some people with some people you have to be really really calm and really patient so you have to read the person that's the reason as a coach first we let them speak their heart out and then we get on and design kya karna hai unke sath like uh, hearing about situations i remembered uh, simon sinek's a uh, quote he's like no we are not the victims of our situations but the architectures of architect of it so true so true that's I why i've understood this today yeah. but i was also doing the same thing for so yeah. so many years in my life hum sab yahi karte hain na jab tak hame samajh nahi aati ya kal nahi aati so for me i think uh, coaching is something that chose me i never chose coaching so for me this is not a profession which i even thought uh, hota hai <laughs> so i i say life has prepared me for coaching so i come from life experiences i landed through life experiences in coaching right so you have two initiatives uh, i suppose it's like your essence and the skill curators so could you please tell us something about these two initiatives that you run uh basically initiative kya hai so i'll tell you uh, when i when i moved as an independent uh, trainer that's trainer so that was totally skill based training so that's when i started uh, skill curators and then after a couple of years coaching happened up coaching uh, was more of a heart to heart connect a different thing wasn't gelling too well with the skill curator side of it so i opened i started a different side of it now i'm just trying to merge together that this is one entity this is one person so i i am hoping to uh, in the near future just i'm already working towards is nidhi as a brand nidhi as a brand is trainer and a coach both right so that's what i'm uh, working towards making sure but otherwise uh, there's no much difference it's just that it's the same same person talking about two different things initially yes it was very very different because on skill curators i would only talk about skills and your essence i would only talk about coaching but uh, over time i have tried to merge them and get them on the same track i'm trying to do that okay right so you're a student at the internet moguls of the world school So, how has your experience been with Avi Arya and the community members? Awesome. So, Avi came into my life when uh, I think I needed a, some a mentor like that. So, I was stuck at one point in time. Uh, coaching हो गया था, सब हो गया था. लेकिन अब क्या? दुनिया में तो भरे पड़े हैं coach. मैं क्या करूँ अब? Where am I? So. आई आई डेंट नो वट एम आई सपोज टू डू सारे माइंड सेट कोच है सभी जिसको देखो लेफ्ट राइट सेंटर एवरीबडी कोच वॉट एम आई मतलब गो एम आई तो दैट डिस्टिंगशन एट दैट वॉज द पॉइंट वेन आई एम ओ टी डब्ल्यू हैपेंड एंड अवी हैपेंड एंड अंडरस्टूड हाउ आई एम सपोज टू फाइंड माई नीश हाउ एम सपोज टू पोजिशन माई सेल्फ सो फ्रॉम देयर फ्रॉम बींग जस्ट अ लाइफ कोच the emotional clarity aspect came in that was the whole journey that i went through with avi and his teachings and of course the community it's been beautiful i think um, so much of support so much of support so much of positivity and there is so much of energy there you know kabhi kabhi when they say na hum log baat mein bolte hain ki be a part of a community mastermind the kind of people who are around you they influence you so everybody was moving in a different in the same direction different work but same direction sab log chal rahe hain so there was a lot of push a lot of momentum a lot of energy in the same direction which was the best thing and uh, i think i for life i owe it to abhi i keep telling him uh, every time i have so much of gratitude for that man um because he he changed the trajectory of my life you know he gave me a little positioning in this uh, this virtual world right okay so as you always like since we have started this conversation you have always said your profession has choose you 
uh, you know, you've, you've like, like experienced life on its own and all that. So have you planned, like, how will the next three or five years of your professional journey be? Or you've just let it on life itself? No, now I'm planning because uh, uh, earlier, like I said, um, okay, so I'll just give you, I, I, was, I was not at all ambitious when I was in school, college. So, so you know, possibly it was not coming from a space of passion or space of uh, purpose or which you always find with time. So with training and with coaching happening, uh, I found... I found my happy space. Okay. Okay. I don't get up now in the morning and thinking, I hey, aaj kya karenge. So I don't think so that day has ever come for the last, uh, at least since I've started, you know, I've, I've been in this space now. So the best thing about being in this space is that I found part purpose. Why part purpose? Abhi bahut purpose aana baki hai. You know, at least this direction I have got. So now I definitely plan. So in the next three years, if you ask me, I want to build my name in the as a corporate in the corporate world as a trainer, as a you know, as a trainer who's adding more value because there's a long way to go. I know that there are so many others. So that's something definitely I want. I want in the next three years. I definitely see my programs being. Uh, rolled out where you know they move to the passive mode where they don't need me all the time so currently um, my programs need me but I want to move them in the next three years to a passive mode where mm, log, logo ko usse effect, usse impact ho rai, even when Nidhi is not present in front of them right so that's something which I want to do I want to uh, I have a mission of impacting uh, three years. I have half a million. Bolungi. Uh, waise to I have a mission of impacting a million lives. So, in three years, I can impact half a million lives and make, make them better communicators. So, when I talk about better communicators, I don't talk about um, skills, communication skills. I talk about communication with yourself also, internally, externally, right? Her tarike ki. Right. So that is something that I am working on. And I, you will see me as, you see more of me as a, a speaker. I'm definitely going to be, have delivered my TED talk. Uh, so I have a couple of things in mind and I'm going to build my own uh, multi-million business. So, yeah. Abhi, abhi, pura banta hai. Achche se banta hai. All right. So that comes to the end of the professional journey. Over to you, Jolly, for the personal chat. Uh, thank you so much, Mansoor. Uh, so, ma'am, let's uh, get forward with the personal questions where we just interact with our guests, knowing them, trying to know them a little better than apart from their professional life, what they are in the personal life. So my first question to you would be, what is your favorite thing to do in your leisure time what do you like to prefer doing you know sometimes uh, when you are working for yourself sometimes your leisure work leisure everything is so you know it's all together sometimes you know so that that is uh, definitely there but i love going out for a walk i love going out for my walks and my uh, fitness uh, you know that is something that I, I, I totally love. And sometimes I love sleeping. I'm not sleeping. I love lying down lifeless. Uh, sofa mila. Good job. <laughs> sometimes that I, I enjoy doing that. Doing nothing. But just lying down. So that that, that is something I really, really enjoy. Love, don't expect answers like reading and music. I love that. I love music. I love dancing. But um, yeah, that's fun sometimes doing nothing. Oh. That is the most honest answer I have ever came across from a guest, <laughs> literally. <laughs> so, ma'am, like, <laughs> yes, ma'am, like, everybody is in, like, reading and studying and, like, watching movies and so, but, yeah, there is one part of us who, like, loves to do nothing and, like, just laying down lifelessly. <laughs> So that is the thing. I traveling I love to travel. I go meet out with my friends. I'll do all of that. Yes, ma'am. 
Absolutely. So you wrote a book, ma'am. So uh, my next question would be related to that, that uh, what are you more into reading a fiction when it comes to reading, not writing, but when it comes to reading uh, a fiction or a nonfiction? And like the additional question to that would be what, uh, what is your favorite book and who is your favorite author, if any? Uh, I have never enjoyed reading. Okay. Uh, for a long time, I've never enjoyed reading. When I was growing up, I used to have Mills and Boons, you know, and all those kind of, and my friends would read. And I would open the first page and I would think. So that was me as a reader. Though I've read, I've read Shakespeare, I've read a lot of books. It's not that I don't read. But I've read a lot of books. But something I realized that whatever I was reading and if I really enjoyed it, it had to be non-fiction. Uh, by then, of course, I was not a coach or a trainer. I had written nothing. But yes, when I look back, I've always enjoyed reading true stories. अब उसमें आप मुझे बुक दो या कोई आर्टिकल दो किसी मैगजीन का बट आई वुड हैव आई वुड आई वुड एंजॉय रीडिंग दैट एंड नाउ इट्स ऑल नॉन फिक्शन इट्स ऑल समथिंग दैट हेल्प्स मी ग्रो हेल्प्स मी अंडरस्टैंड माय वर्क माय लाइफ बेटर सो या आई टोटली एंजॉय दैट नॉन आई थिंक फिक्शन आई एम नॉट अ फिक्शन पर्सन एट ऑल एक्सेप्ट फॉर बॉलीवुड या सो आई एंजॉय नॉन फिक्शन टोटली and my favorite book would be there are many but this is one book i really like i like simple stuff i like really simple stuff mujhe simply samajh mein aata hai and agar main apna next book bhi likhungi jo abhi chal raha hai it's going to be pretty simple okay kyunki mujhe lagta hai ki agar main simple hu na mujhe matlab simple samajh mein aata hai mere jaise 50 aage baithe hain that can be my audience i don't need to write uh, you know to complicate stuff to show up ki mere mind mein kya hai so uh, who will die when, who will cry when you die by robin sharma i love that mm-hmm. book i love that book right and simple one page stories one page um, memoirs i love that totally love that or bhi hai which i really love but that book was so simple it made me i could connect with every every word that i read there easily right so that is something which i like otherwise to matlab alag alag genre mein alag alag tarike se bahut sara books hai but yeah definitely ma'am so uh, you are like very much active on social media creating videos and creating content for instagram facebook linkedin and like a Uh, a lot more so how do you do that do you plan how do you strategize your content how do you go for it because in the present time a content creation is really a thing and educational content creation is something like uh, not a lot of people are doing but what you are doing is like a totally it is a content creation but it is a total different game so how do you go for it थैंक यू इफ यूर फीलिंग इट्स अ टोटली डिफरेंट गेम बिकॉज मुझे लगता है सब लोग हाँ एंटरटेनमेंट वालों के साथ कम्पीट करना बड़ा मुश्किल हो जाता है बट या थैंकफुली सो आई हैव वन थिंग आई वॉन्ट टू से इज दैट आई एम नॉट बीन बॉर्डर्ड बाई नंबर्स Uh, मुझे कोई फर्क नहीं पड़ता अगर मेरी uh, कोई एक पर्टिकुलर वीडियो को 200 लाइक्स 200 व्यूज मिले हैं या 2000 मिले हैं रियली डोंट केयर या मतलब आई आई रियली डोंट अब ज्यादा होंगे बहुत अच्छा लगता है लेकिन अगर कम है तो कोई बात नहीं उन 200 ने भी तो देखा आई हैड एन ऑडियंस ऑफ 200 इन दिस वर्ल्ड सो किसी ने देखा किसी ने कनेक्ट किया एटलीस्ट दो पीपल आर वॉचिंग आई कैन डू बेटर बट दैट्स आई एम परफेक्टली हैप्पी विद क्रिएटिंग कॉन्टेंट येस आई डू टॉक अ लॉर्ड अबाउट what i believe in and uh, the topics that are closer to my niche my work so that people know what is nidhi about so strategy mera wahi rehta hai i do not uh, jump on the bandwagon ki puri duniya agar ye kare to main bhi wahi karunga uh, yes people are doing similar stuff what i am doing aisa nahi hai ki main koi anokhi hu 
बट यस आई डू प्लान इट आउट कि मुझे किस टॉपिक पे अगले कुछ दिन बात करना है एंड हाउ एम आई गोइंग टू प्रेजेंट इट सो आई डू वर्क ऑन दैट एंड आई डू प्लान आउट इन अ वीक वेन आई एम गोइंग टू वर्क ऑन माई कॉन्टेंट क्रिएशन एंड वॉट आई एम गोइंग टू डू एंड हाउ आई एम गोइंग टू डू दैट सो दैट्स द लिटल प्लानिंग दैट आई डू फॉर माई वर्क Uh, so ma'am uh, you have had a talk with mansoor about like your two initiatives your essence and the skill curators uh, so i can like say that you have branded on yourself on instagram and facebook as like your essence and curator so uh, like you explain like how it has been and everything but what is the story behind it like why like you just went into it like the two and you have branded everything around it how it has been uh like i mentioned skill curators happened uh when i moved into training as an independent trainer so i was thinking naam kya rakhe naam kya rakhe naam kya kaise karna hai so that's how skill curators happened um then coaching when coaching happened which is more of a heart to heart emotional connect so your essence now this was again you know wo kya naam rakhna hai because uh, one thing that i believed in is that uh, you need to be your you need to have your own essence khud ka kya hai copy paste to aap kar loge dusre ka lekin khud ka kya hai become who you are you know so yes. be your your version don't be somebody else's version so that was the whole idea behind your essence and uh, going forward i I'm I'm still debating actually about it that इसको पूरे को किस अम्ब्रेला में लाया जाए Like I said, Nidhi, of course, I am going to build myself as a brand, not my uh, name, not your essence or skill curators will be a part of Nidhi. So that is what I'm working on. Um, you know that how I can get everything together as a brand. But the idea was just to become your your own version. So when skill curators happen, it was totally from a skill uh, skills perspective. but when uh, coaching happened um i tried even the skill aspect to be your own you know so the so today from where i drive is uh, uh so i'll give you a little example here to understand uh i started as an esl trainer esl trainer means uh, english as a secondary language so i'm certified to uh, train people Uh, who are second language uh, whose english is a second language and not a native non native uh, english speakers uh, those people i can train i'm certified to train them in english now when i started out and i would train them in english i would have ceos and successful people sitting in front of me taking training from me and telling me ma'am aap to bahut acche ho you are so good you can speak in english i found that shallow i found that really shallow ki main kya kaam kar rahi hu मतलब एंड आई वुड टेल देम लाइक आपको सीरियसली लगता है कि आप कुछ नहीं हो जस्ट बिकॉज आपको इंग्लिश नहीं आती है एंड दैट वाज व्हेन यू नो आई डिसाइडेड आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू जस्ट बी एन ईएसएल ट्रेनर आई हैव टू वर्क ऑन द कॉन्फिडेंस बिकॉज इंग्लिश इज नॉट अ क्राइटेरिया फॉर कॉन्फिडेंस I am happy speaking in Hindi. I mean, I have spoken so for so long. I've been speaking in Hindi. I love English. What is the see what what is it about communication? आपको मेरी बात समझ में आनी चाहिए मुझे आप की राय सो उसमें मैं इंग्लिश कहाँ से बीच में लाई जब जरूरी है yes we will talk in English so you know that's when I shifted uh, gears as like I want to I'm I'll be an ESL trainer but I'm not going to be speaking only in English because if my learners do not understand what I'm speaking in English it's a waste so that's when I would. use a lot of hindi in my sessions ensuring that once they've got confidence then let's step it up to english totally so that's how from totally being a skill based uh, initiative of skill curators it's becoming your own version don't make language uh, or any other skill a criteria your confidence speaks it all so i work a lot on the internal part even in my training so yeah that's the space that i come from today
Uh, yes, ma'am. So my next question would be like, we have had so much conversation about how and what goes behind you being an emotional clarity coach. And, uh, and also like right now you said like you were not okay being just an ESL coach and everything. So from ESL coach to an emotional clarity coach, but what inspired you to become an emotional clarity coach? Why that only and not something else? Because coaches like you could have coached in some for some other thing. Like, why did you just go for the emotional clarity one? If I may ask. Interesting one, because uh, niche changed many times before I finally understood that emotional clarity, emotions is something it's it's my strength and uh, as i was gaining more clarity and more i was as becoming more sorted myself this is what i was even attracting and uh, that's how so when i had done coaching i was a life coach first i started writing life coach i'm sure sari agar koi coach sun raha hoga na wo samajh sakta hai ye cheez and uh, then i maine likha mindset coach sunne mein acha lagta hai mindset likhing so mindset coach likha उसके बाद ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन कोच लिखा क्योंकि ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन भी अच्छा लग रहा है सब लोग माइंडसेट पे आ गए तो फिर मैं ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन पे आ गई लेकिन फिर ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन पे भी सब आ गए फिर मैंने कहा यार ये भी है तो गड़बड़ है दैट्स मैन अभी के साथ शुरू हुआ फिर निश क्लैरिटी समझ में आया शुरू किया समझना क्या होता है and i understood that i was attracting a lot of people my clients were mostly people in their middle age right how to narrow down so i still am uh, but i do not write that a midlife clarity coach okay midlife confusion midlife yes. crisis that area so that's what i started writing and uh, as i started getting more clarity of my work i realized that i'm actually working on the emotions राइट right. मैं इमोशंस में हेल्प कर रही हूँ बहुत ज्यादा एंड आधे से ज्यादा लोग आर इन देयर मिड लाइफ बट आई एम आल्सो हेल्पिंग पीपल हु आर इन देयर अर्ली ट्वेंटीज और ट्वेंटीज और लेट लेटर स्टेजेस ऑफ देयर लाइफ एंड एवरीथिंग दैट वाज कॉमन वाज इमोशनल क्लैरिटी एंड आई वाज एबल टू कनेक्ट इवन मैं किसी से अगर बात भी कर रही थी सो आई वॉज एबल टू कनेक्ट एट एन इमोशनल लेवल समवेयर विच ऑटोमेटिकली केम that made me realize that i need i think this is becoming my strength and i need to focus and i need to position myself there so that's how emotional clarity came in. right so iska bhi apna journey hai niche samajhte samajhte and um, i remember that time abhi sir abhi bahut niche change hogi tum logo ki don't worry to so, samajh hi aaya tha kitna change hoga <laughs> i'm sure abhi aur bhi uh, kuch naya aayega aage ja kar but uh, yeah and it's doing hmm. well because Uh, i i i'm also an eq certified eq practitioner so i i i'm and everything the whole coaching aspect in any area of life is all around emotions so if you get that sorted i think life is sorted definitely ma'am life is a journey of emotion i would say oh. uh, so uh, moving on to my next question uh, what would be the your favorite time of the day and like why because we all have that one time when we like we love the most i have two mm-hmm. one is early morning <laughs> so i love the fact that um, i when i get up i'm not like are kyun uth gayi you know so the mind is working ki aaj kya karna hai aaj kya naya hai ya kuch to naya aane wala hai you know so that the little excitement is there so i love that and uh, second uh, part of the day second one is my evenings i love my evenings because uh, i go out for a walk or i go out for my fitness class and uh, whatever i do during the day that time sorts it out sara de stress ho jata hai and for nothing in this world will i miss that and everybody knows it ye nahi karegi miss nahi karegi and this not like i'm traveling ya main nahi kar payi hu koi bahut lamba program hai so but, I, but then I, you know then i try to adjust that part of the day to morning to morning mein karke jaye you know so so these two times of the day i totally love i so 
do you believe that uh, visiting different places helps people to come out from like many different issues from what we have been talking about your professional life and how do you like go on coaching people about their emotions and everything so do you really believe that uh, visiting different places and having different experiences from those places uh, helps people to come out from many different issues and emotions and understand themselves better totally jolly i think uh... when you're meeting people you're traveling you're seeing different perspectives you're de- seeing life from a different uh, filter altogether different glasses logo ke rehne ka tarika itna alag hota hai logo se baat agar karo uh, cultures are different experiences if you just talk you you learn in fact sometimes you get answers to your own questions also so i think traveling definitely definitely if you're moving around even if you can't travel the world if you can't travel out of your city even if you just travel in your own city just go to unknown places even that is good enough to see ki logo ke paas matlab log kya kar rahe hain kaise kar rahe hain unka perspective unka nazariya kya hai and that can help you find a lot of answers for yourself yes ma'am so do you have any suggestions for the future generations for us who are like just building up their careers who are just going on with it we have had like we have a long time ahead of us so do you have any suggestions for us i would say all that i have understood is uh, be ready to accept accept life adapt to it and be patient you know to go live your dreams explore that that's that's what i have understood be ready for change don't be stuck because sometimes when you're stuck you you end up closing doors so you don't be stuck be ready to explore and uh, along with that also have patience if you started out something be patient give it time to grow give it time to happen and things will happen and yeah one thing uh one small little thing which can help anybody is have that faith keep the faith faith is very very powerful that everything is going to happen yes ma'am like that is i feel <laughs> we all feel in fact so like uh, moving towards the end of our session my two question like i am just adding up the two questions that what is nidhi as a person who is nidhi as a person and how nidhi would describe herself in one word if she asked to do that speaker speaker i'm just a seeker um i'm not just one one thing that i'm seeking i'm just seeking a lifelong seeker that i am that's what i am that's what i understood bachpan se lekar agar main aaj tak kabhi apna journey dekho <laughs> thank you so much ma'am for this amazing and amazing conversation for having that with us giving your precious time we have had a lovely time i we like me and mansu didn't even realize how much time has just passed like we we were so indulged in our conversation so thank you so much for giving us our precious time uh, so over to you mansu thank you thank you jolly okay so nidhi uh, we are coming to the end of our session so we going to ask you a few questions that are going to be little bit out of the box but will help you think and even give a very good you know like a, a very good picture about you to our viewers what kind of person you are when you when these questions are given to you so i would like to kick it off with okay so nidhi given a chance that you would get a chance to go back in time okay travel in a time machine who would be that one person you would meet and why ye kya rapid fire ho raha hai kya very normal upper time will you just bully abhi socha hi nahi hai you know itna okay that one person i'd like to meet and why ah uh, i'd like to meet jhansi uh, ki rani okay i definitely like to meet that uh, woman and i'd like to meet uh, i'd like to understand you know how that courage you know how to fight the world fight 
दोज कस्टम इन दैट पॉइंट इन टाइम हम लोग इतना बात करते हैं ना दुनिया क्या बोलेगी दुनिया क्या बोलेगी वेन वी टॉकिंग अबाउट एटीन फिफ्टी सेवन हम लोग इतना पुराना बात कर रहे हैं इन दो टाइम वुमेन फाइटिंग अ लोन विद अ चाइल्ड एंड हाउ शी डिड इट आई वुड लव टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट माइंड सेट Yeah, so uh, like you said, you would like to meet Jhansi ki Rani in the when you like get the opportunity to travel in the past. But what about the future? Like, if you get a time machine and you are you start traveling to a future, like what would be the time you would like to stop in, and what would you like to see and go into, and why? Actually, I'd why? Like to, I'd like to see twenty years from now. What am I? <laughs> फ्यूचर फ्यूचर में जाके और पॉसिबली आई कैन सी माई सन वट इज यू डूंग no yeah uh-huh. okay uh, so nidhi uh, this is the last question what i want to ask from my end okay okay given the chance you have one wish okay this one wish but that wish you could only that one wish what you would ask would impact the entire world so what would be that one wish that you would like to give back to the universe this is a tough one would give back to the universe one wish i just uh, one wish would be that i keep working uh, till the day i die i keep working till my end day and i keep working on the same lines because this is something that i've understood that uh, you know is raste pe jana hai kyunki ye raste mein bahut bahut impact hai jo main kar sakti hu whatever i can do for other people so this is definitely my one wish that i want to continue this and i want to continue doing this till the end of my life yeah i want to make my son proud i'm sure he's proud of me yeah yes definitely definitely yeah. uh, so ma'am like uh, if if you are like as that you have to like have one food today but you will not be allowed to have it for the rest of your life till the day you die so what would be that one food be Oh God, Karela. Oh my God. Yeah, I'll eat it today, but I won't eat it again. I don't know. I hate it, but I'm okay to give it up. <laughs> so you getting the courage to eat it even for a day is like a big thing, I would say. Yeah, my my mom cooks well. Mom, she's good at making. I don't like Karela. 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 ंग्रीमिंग <laughs> because it's hopeless without dreams all right that's a good one <laughs> okay uh, so thank you nidhi it was an amazing conversation we had today with you hopefully looking on for having more conversations too thank you really so amazing. much thank you mansoor thank you jolly it was a pleasure all right Okay guys and we sign off then all right take care guys and see you in the next episode thank you thank you thank you bye 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 yeah